The Darkest Web. Well, here we are. It's October, our month. Halloween falls on a Saturday. It's a full moon. Most everywhere gets an extra hour because of daylight savings. It's a perfect recipe for an epic Halloween. And then COVID enters stage right and takes a big whiz directly on our plans. Well, damn it, I'm determined to enjoy Halloween, and if you are too, let's talk about some fun stuff that can help you keep that spooky spirit alive. Er, or undead. Thank goodness there's a real wealth of season-appropriate new horror, either out now or coming soon. If we're all stuck at home, at least we could have lots of great creepy new content to watch, right? There's a second season of Eli Roth's History of Horror streaming on AMC on October 10th. This series takes a good look at the history of horror films, why we love them, the craft that goes into making them, and how they represent the social climate they're created in. It features interviews from a variety of horror-related writers, actors, cinematographers, composers, and special effects artists, the likes of Stephen King, Jordan Peele, Greg Nicotero, Roger Corman, John Landis, Tom Savini, and a whole bunch of others. By the way, Season 1 is available now on Shudder. I haven't checked this next one out yet, but there's a film called 1031 A Halloween Horror Anthology available on the Kings of Horror YouTube channel. Originally, this was a straight-to-DVD release, but give the trailer a watch. It looks like it may have potential to be fun. And since it's an anthology, if one story isn't doing it for you, maybe the next one will. I will include links to both the trailer and to the full movie in the show notes. Coming October 9th on Netflix, there's a series called The Haunting of Bly Manor. This is a follow-up to the 2018 Netflix series The Haunting of Hill House. It's set in 1980s England and is the story of a young American girl hired to be a nanny for two orphan children. And while she's there, of course, all sorts of strange haunting events begin taking place. It's a gothic romance that's loosely based on a horror novella from 1898, The Turn of the Screw by Henry James. I am excited for this one. I do love a good atmospheric haunting story. You can find a teaser trailer on Netflix, and I'll include the link in the show notes for that, of course. Oh, and side note, the trailer makes use of the song O oh Willow Whaley that was featured in the film The Innocents from 1961. And if you haven't seen that film, you really should. Also on Netflix is the new series about the young nurse Ratched titled, appropriately, Ratched. The series premiered September 18th and stars Sarah Paulson. I've read a lot of reviews that say this one is beautifully shot but pretty stupid. I'm just about done with this one, and I can say that I really love the art direction. The colors and cinematography are incredible. Costumes are gorgeous, and the music reminds me of Bernard Herrmann's work, who was the composer who set the tone for Hitchcock's films. I don't think the story is quite as bad as many of the reviewers do, but that being said, it's really not great storytelling or writing. I mean, I keep watching, so it's got me hooked nevertheless. Give it a watch. See what you think. There's another horror anthology film you may want to check out called Books of Blood. This one is a new adaptation of Clive Barker's Books of Blood, which were six volumes of original stories published in the 80s. Brandon Braga is the director and co-writer of the film, and he and Seth MacFarlane are the executive producers. This one's coming to Hulu on October 7th. I have included a link in the show notes for the trailer to this one as well. Yet another anthology, there's an eight-part horror anthology miniseries coming to Hulu called Monsterland. This is based on a collection of short stories called North American Lake Monsters, and each episode is set in a different American city. The series is described as weird fiction, a la Poe or Lovecraft, and emotional character-based horror like Rosemary's Baby. This one premieres October 2nd. I'll definitely be checking this one out. Again, check the show notes for a link to the trailer. If you need some new horror-related stuff to wear, like t-shirts, pajamas, pins, socks, or just about anything else, you should absolutely go peruse the insanely huge inventory on the Fright Rags website. Seriously, the sheer number of collections they have is overwhelming. I can't imagine any horror fan not finding a whole heap of stuff that they would enjoy having. They also have various collectibles. That website is www.fright-rags.com. 
And here's another website full of awesome stuff that's sure to drain your bank account. May I present Halloween Shirt Company. Honestly, there's just too many awesome things on this site for me to choose even a few to feature. Just go check it out. That website is www.halloweenshirtcompany.com. Oh, and as if I didn't blab enough about Spirit Halloween last time, just take a gander at their new Demogorgon prop. He's seven and a half feet tall and boasts a price tag of a whopping $1,300. Yowza. So we all know it's important to support small businesses and independent artists, and I want to recommend a couple of outstanding ones to you right now. Mary Siring is a San Francisco-based artist who's making really wonderful art with Halloween, magic, and spooky themes. Her work is vintage-inspired, hearkening back to the look and feel of the Victorian era through to the 1930s. Her website has original pieces for sale, prints, and various merch featuring her designs. I really love the stickers, and they're only $4 a piece. Her web address is www.marysiringart.com, and Mary Siring is spelled Mary the usual way, M-A-R-Y. Siring is S-Y-R-I-N-G. Also check out Vintage Spooky Company on Etsy. Shop owner Gary creates die cuts, t-shirts, decals, ornaments, prints, and pins based off his original designs. His style is greatly inspired by Halloween decor of the 60s, 70s, and 80s, and it has a really fun vintage feel to it. You can also follow him on Instagram and Facebook. Just search for Vintage Spooky. The last artist I want to shout out is The Witchy Stitcher. If you like doing cross-stitch, you need to check out this website. The shop owner is a Canadian gal named Meg Black, and she makes cross-stitch patterns for, quote, the witchy, the gothic, horror lovers, and the twisted, end quote. And indeed she does. Some pattern themes she offers are Beetlejuice, Friday the 13th, Michael Myers, Adam's Family, Tarot Card, Haunted Mansion, and of course General Halloween, as well as many others. That website is thewitchystitcher.com, or you can find digital patterns for sale in her Etsy shop at Witchy Stitcher. I'm sure most all of you are already familiar with the amazing Alan Hops of Stilt Bee Studios, but just in case you aren't following his YouTube channel, I wanted to make sure I mentioned it. So I wanted to fill a couple of masks with some type of sturdy foam for some props I'm working on for this year, but I wanted something I could get my hands on immediately that wouldn't cost much and would be effective. After a little YouTube searching, I found that Stilt Beast had a video about using a two-part foam available at Home Depot. I tried it and it worked perfectly. It cost me 12 bucks maybe to fill two masks. I'll include a link to that video in particular, but I highly suggest you subscribe to Stilt Beast's channel because if you're working on a prop, there's a pretty decent chance that he's made a video, if not multiple videos, about different methods of making it happen. If you're looking for some simple little touches to add to your haunt or display, maybe try some fireflies. I remember when I was a very little kid and took my first ride on the Pirates of the Caribbean. I loved all of it, but I probably most loved the very beginning part of the ride, where you float on the black water through the dark, cool, sleepy swamp, the sound of a banjo being lazily plucked, and the magical twinkle of fireflies below the trees. Well, turns out you can achieve that with a very simple low-tech project. Hollywood Haunter has lots of fun Halloween prop-related videos on YouTube, but take a look at the easy glow-in-the-dark firefly decoration video. I'm hoping to whip up some of these to add to my haunt this year. I'll include a link in the show notes for you. The Samhain Society is a group of Halloween and horror bloggers and content creators that have made a great Halloween zine that you should really check out. It's free and it's chock full of fun stuff from recipes to spooky history to pumpkin carving tips and tricks and so on. I'll include a link to the PDF in the show notes and be sure to follow the Samhain Society on Facebook and Instagram. Well, my fellow freaks, I think that'll do it for now. While I know this year isn't going to be exactly what we're all hoping for, make sure you enjoy it anyway. This is our night after all, and we only get so many in a lifetime. Carve some pumpkins, eat some candy, watch some scary movies, and find the magic however you can. We are the October people, and it's up to us to keep the spirit of Samhain. I'll leave you with a bit of a Celtic prayer. The veil is at its thinnest. We walk between the worlds. Diviners bring their instruments, and mysteries become unfurled. 
And now the witching hour is upon us once again. We share a blessed circle with our loved ones and our friends. Blessed be to guardians, to deities, and more still. Blessed be to you, let the harvest your heart fill. So mote it be. Blessed Samhain, and happy Halloween. See you next time, right back here, in the darkest web. I'm going now. Heaven help you. Please like and follow the podcast. Stalk us on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. Links in the description. And help us by sharing Hauntcast with all your haunted Halloween brethren. Until next time, stay scary.